In the last class, we saw how coordination number and oxidation state are two numerical quantities that characterize transition metal complexes. In addition, there are two other numbers that are commonly used to describe these complexes. The total electron count around the transition metal and the d electron count of the metal ion itself. We'll start with the d electron count, in part because it's quite straightforward. A particular transition metal atom has a set number of valence electrons based on its position in the periodic table. While an isolated individual atom of a transition metal has valence electrons in both s and d orbitals, whenever a metal is in a complex, all of its valence electrons are in d orbitals, unless there happen to be more than 10. Remember that when atoms become cations, they lose valence electrons. So we can easily calculate the total number of valence d electrons based on the identity of the metal and its oxidation state. For instance, an atom of iron has eight valence electrons. So an iron ion with a plus three oxidation state would have five valence electrons. The total number of valence electrons on a transition metal in a coordination complex is called its d electron count, or just d count, and is often labeled as a lowercase d with a superscript. So iron 3 is a d5 ion. Another important numerical value that characterizes transition metal complexes is the total electron count. Transition metals follow a rule called the 18 electron rule, which is analogous to the octet rule for atoms in the p-block. p-block elements tend to prefer to have eight total electrons surrounding them so as to have completely full valence orbitals. Remember their valence orbitals are an s and 3p orbitals. The transition metals also tend to be happiest when their valence orbitals are all satisfied. But in addition to their s and p orbitals, they also have d orbitals that can be filled. Since there are one s orbital, three p orbitals, and five d orbitals on a given metal atom, it can accommodate up to 18 electrons. Now, mind you, this is this 18 electron rule probably ought to be called the 18 electron suggestion because lots and lots of transition metal ions uh, transition metal complexes, rather, don't really obey it, but it is a valid tendency. I should say there are very few transition metal complexes that exceed the 18 electron rule, but there are lots of examples that have fewer than 18 electrons. To determine a particular complex's total electron count, there are two different methods. They both give the same result for the vast majority of cases. I have a preference for one method, which is different from the one our textbook employs, but you can take your pick. Using my method, which is the one most commonly used in the US, we simply take the number of valence electrons for the metal straight off the periodic table, add two electrons for each L-type ligand, and one electron for each X-type ligand, and subtract the overall charge on the complex. So let's calculate the total electron count for the hexachloroplatinate 4 ion. Platinum is in the 10th column of the periodic table, so 10 valence electrons, plus 1 electron for each of the 6 Cl- ligands, and we subtract negative 2, the overall charge, for a total of 18 electrons. Let's finish by determining both the d count and the total electron count of one more complex. Wilkinson's catalyst. To determine the d electron count of the metal, we just need to know the oxidation state. This complex has only one x-type ligand and no overall charge, so the rhodium is in the plus one oxidation state. Since rhodium is in column nine, with a plus one oxidation state, it's a d8 ion. To determine the total electron count, we start with the rhodium's nine valence electrons, adding two for each of the L-type ligands, here are the phosphenes, one more for the X-type ligand, chloride. There's no overall charge, 
So this is a 16-electron complex.